Courage. We invite you to use the hashtag INTGenderChampions and IGC Vienna, as well as the handle at UN underscore Vienna for any social media that you'll be doing live. Um, also, you'll see here the Vienna tab of the GenderChampions.com website is now live. The Champions entries are still being populated and will continue to do so over the next few days. The Intergen International Gender Champions Initiative was born out of the efforts of the United Nations Office of in Geneva, the U.S. permanent mission there, and the NGO Women at the Table. It is a leadership network of permanent representatives and heads of organizations that bring together female and male decision makers to break down gender barriers. Leaders are asked to make commitments on an individual level to lead by example in promoting gender equality in the organizations in which they lead. By signing on to a panel parity pledge, champions commit to reducing the number of, and hopefully event eventually eliminating entirely, single sex speaking panels. Champions then make two additional personalized commitments and agree to track their progress on these commitments over time. After its establishment in Geneva in June of 2015, the International Gender Champions expanded this earlier this year to New York. We are pleased to be the third city added to this prestigious roster, and I'm elated to see so many of Vienna's own gender champions here in the crowd this afternoon. When it comes to gender empowerment in my country, Costa Rica, we have made strides we can be proud of. For example, we have now more females graduating university than men. Yet, at the same time, women still face higher levels of unemployment than male do. And also, they account for over more than twice as much uh, house chores than men. In order to combat the, the disparity, Costa Rica has developed and implemented the third action plan of, of the National Gender Equality and Equity Strategy, which focuses on fighting the structural object, obstacles that prevent full economic empowerment of women and gender equality. The men engage that. And it is also for this reason that this year I decided to join my colleagues from Costa Rica and the United States in preparing the inauguration of the International Gender Champions here at the Vienna International Center. Let me therefore thank all the male colleagues who have already joined the initiative. I think that you have set an important example for others to follow. The last thing I would like to emphasize is that in Slovenia we believe that gender equality is not a zero-sum game, but a win-win proposition. Our own experience has shown that increasing the number of women in crisis management processes and peacekeeping missions leads to better quality of brokerage and mediation. We have also seen that women's participation and leadership not only augments public and political life, but also improves it. I think that in practice this means that by championing causes such as equal fatherhood and family life, and defeminizing work-life balance processes, we men can act as important allies and agents of change that is not only just and right, but also mutually beneficial. Connect as a force multiplier as we work together to generate momentum for meaningful change. I am proud to join the International Gender Champions and reinforce my strong commitment to promote greater equality in our work at the UN office in Vienna and the UN office on drugs and crime. Achieving true equality and empowering women to realize their potential are important uh, and worthy aims. They are also essential if we as a UN family are to be as effective as possible to support you member states to achieve sustainable development goals especially to advance justice and the rule of law. As part of my commitment as a gender champion, I have pledged to highlight programs promoting gender equality and women's empowerment and to further encourage an inclusive and flexible work 
for all year and you know this is tough. I command and congratulate my fellow gender champions for showing leadership and doing their parts. I would also like to thank Costa Rica, US and Slovenia for organizing this very important and timely event. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am very happy to be invited to this summer meeting and uh, to have become a gender champion myself. Women are playing an essential role in the IAEA. You may know that yesterday our program and budget was adopted. And I thank the support from uh, for, from our member states. But I also would like to thank uh, to Mary Alice and Tomiko Ichikawa, who play an uh, essential role uh, to um, achieve uh, this result. They are very capable women, and of course many other men and women are working, uh, but uh, their dedication and uh, contribution was essential uh, to achieve uh, this result. Women are quite often the beneficiaries of the IAEA program. In 2009, I went to Nigeria, and I remember uh, what I, uh, I saw there. Women having breast cancer or cervical cancer are ashamed of themselves, cannot tell uh, their uh, husbands and leave the house and simply die. This is a human tragedy. And uh, since uh, that point on, I have been very much interested in cancer control in developing countries and I keep on uh, doing that. I am encouraging member states to send to capable women to our training course and fellowship. I am helping, uh, our organization is helping capacity uh, building. I make a lot of uh, duty travels under my current uh, capacity. And um, whenever I give a speech uh, uh, in the country, I look at the audience and count uh, what is the proportion of men and women. And if uh, the uh, proportion of women is higher, I say, your country has a bright future. <laughs> in Philippines, almost all of them are women. And when I said it, they said, yeah. And after that, they wanted to take photos with me. <laughs> Today, the women's representation is much higher. Is it a really good thing or not? I wanted to have better representation of men, especially today, uh, so that more become, uh, the, uh, the become a gender champion and show interest in this issue. Let me say that I'm also delighted uh, to be here today, to be part of this uh, Gender Champion Initiative, thanks to Costa Rica, Slovenia, and uh, the US. It's true, uh, Laura uh, has been uh, part of this initiative. I met her last week in Oslo, and then we're talking about it. Uh, all of us here, in this building, in this rotunda, should be gender champion in fact, not only the heads or the mission. The United Nations system is built on the idea that we are all born with equal rights and we all have part, our part to play in defending this principle of gender champion. It is true that many of the speakers today are men. I mean, if you look at the front, we all men. Uh, but I hope there are women coming. But no, I said many. I didn't say many. I said many. Because when we talk about equal, we wanted to have equal men and women in front. But in. Anyway, so when I say this, uh, I just wanted to tease you a little bit about gender equality because I was told uh, in the World Economic Forum uh, that when you come to a panel when there is no women, you should just refuse. But uh, since. Uh, I think we have the excellence of the ambassador of Costa Rica. Let's say that we, we went off, so I can, I can stay. But anyway, um, in the course of our life, my life, I think that's where the gender championing starts. I've seen both the immense injustice of locking women out of opportunity and the great benefit that come from putting women and men on equal footing. I say this because my own mother uh, has withdrawn from school to give more opportunity to her brothers 
because women were seen to do much lower job and then give more opportunity for women. But I'm proud and happy to be a father of three wonderful daughters who have the same opportunity in this life today than men. They're eager and then I'm sure they will find their way in life. And that's how things have been changing and still changing. And that's why you, the first champion, will put us today in a situation where we should make this more and more so that we have more women having more and equal opportunity as men. Space Affairs places a high priority on gender equality and women empowerment in the space sector but also in the wider STEM fields. It is really disappointing that in the 21st century and in fields like the space sector, which is known for breaking boundaries, women are significantly underrepresented. When women's contributions and potentials are still not fully utilized, we all miss out, men and women alike. With preparations for our Space for Women project underway, UNUSA is already committed to working with member states to make a real difference in improving gender mainstreaming in the space sector and getting more girls and women, especially in developing countries, into STEM education and careers. These goals are important to me as director of the office and to us all at the Office for Outer Space Affairs. Our United Nations Champions for Space, Champion for Space, former astronaut Scott Kelly, has called for more women in the space sector, proclaiming that the more diverse our community, the more we can achieve together. Director General of UNEDO, Mr. Lee Young, very much appreciates the opportunity to be a gender champion. He views it as a great opportunity to raise awareness of both female and male decision makers' efforts to break the glass ceiling and open the doors of opportunity for women. Unfortunately, he cannot be with us today. On his behalf, I would like to express our sincere appreciation of and support for the launch of this important initiative. At UNIDO, we know that women are powerful agents of change. Gender equality is not only a matter of human rights. Gender equality is critical for inclusive and sustainable industrial development. It is our firm conviction that women must therefore be involved across the board and be at the decision-making table at all levels. The Director General of UNIDO supports the Panel Parity Pledge to ensure that equal numbers of women and men are speaking at events on inclusive and sustainable industrial development. This is both a way to showcase women in leadership roles and to make women's voices better heard. Women as economic actors, leaders and consumers play a vital role in countries' drive towards a higher level of industrialization. In this respect, UNIDO sees a clear linkage between Sustainable Development Goal 9 on inclusive and sustainable industrial development and SDG 5 on the gender equality. We will therefore track progress on the use of the gender marker to assess and report on UNIDO's contribution to gender equality through our programs and projects. Sustainable Industrial Development. On completing this module, staff will be able to appreciate the link between gender equality and inclusive and sustainable industrial development. In closing, let me reiterate that UNIDO is looking forward to seeing stronger concerted actions to enhance gender equality and so make further progress on achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Thank you very much. Be part of this distinguished group Yes, indeed, I'm the last speaker. There's a saying, short speeches move people, long speeches only move chairs. <laughs> and as the last speaker, that truth probably applies double. So I'll be very brief. I have two or three remarks that I'd like to share with you. The first one would be really to say thank you for the leadership of Costa Rica, of Slovenia, of the U.S. for this great initiative, at least bringing this great initiative to Vienna. Uh, that's excellent. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, when we talk about um, 
gender champions. I think the true champions are those women that suffer worldwide simply because of their gender, because they are women. And the champions are those men and women that stand up to prevent that and to try to make a situation better. And stand up for those women who suffer because they are women. And they have to do that, they have to stand up despite the very difficult circumstances. So those are true gender champions. In the OSC, lots of progress has been made. And I see many ambassadors here, representatives of countries, and they are you know, all very strong gender champions. Big steps have been made in our organization over the last couple of years. I'm very proud of the progress that has been made. I'm very proud of the people in our organization that are full-time working on enhancing the position of women and more integrated into the policy and the programs of our organization. I think there's one more step we need to make. That, only does, that not only applies to the OSC, but it goes for all of us. And we all believe nowadays in gender equality, at least we say we do. Uh, there is a certain uh, awareness, which is good, but I think there's one more step we have to make, all of us. We have to go from the theory of saying it to really our mind. And there's lots of evidence that shows how important women inclusion in all processes are, especially now as in the security cooperation in, in Europe, Europe at large. So we're bringing from the theory, bring it to our minds and to our hearts. And I think that's exactly what this initiative does. It brings gender equality, standing up for women, much closer to our hearts. Thank you.